All right, so what's going on everybody? So I want to ask that you guys watch the entirety of this video and you pray through it because this is not an easy video for me to do. In fact, before I even get into that, I, I need to repent in front of you guys because the Lord has given me this word for the last couple of months, but I've neglected to be responsible and obedient in delivering this word on a timely basis. I've been praying through it and oftentimes I've just been delaying it because I was not comfortable giving this word. And so I just want to be straight up honest and I have to repent and uh, say that I have not been obedient in delivering this. And so this is why I uh, am giving this word today to you right now. And it is a difficult word. It requires a lot of discernment. And before you come to any conclusion, any assumption, any judgment, I want to ask that you pray through it and seek wisdom from the Lord and especially biblically speaking because this is not just some fleshly thing. This is not something that I just want to say because uh, for the sake of saying it. And from the title, you could probably assume, okay, what, what is he about to say about death? And so I want to get into that. Now, the first thing I want to say is that we're in a season for which, as I've say, said before, there's a lot of things happening, but one thing that's lacking, right, is the fear of God. Uh, Proverbs 9, 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. And so you have to understand that God, he does things in cycles, whether it's generationally, whether it's in years and seasons, whatever that may be. But God, he also has a balanced way for which he wants you to look at him. You don't want to have an impartial incomplete view of who God is. So many people in this hour, they have been abusing God's grace. They've been abusing how God and the Holy Spirit is working. And because of that, what God has to do is he has to correct things. So the, the stem of all of this is the fact that because people do not understand the, the wrath of God, the judgment of God, a, a healthy fear of the Lord, they cannot, they have to be uh, going through a cycle. God has to allow you to go through a season or a cycle for which people will understand what this was. And now let me just give you a quick, uh, just early church uh, view of who God was and what the church was, right? And so in Acts chapter 2, this is when the church started growing. In verse 41, it says, Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul, Again, then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. Uh, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So this this early church, they, they knew what church was about. They knew what community was about. They knew what worshiping God was about because in the early church, they had a balanced view of who God was. And one of the verses that I just mentioned in verse 43 is, then fear came upon every soul. Now, throughout the years, right? Now, if you if you go to, for example, the church uh, in the first couple of chapters in the book of Revelation, it's talking about uh, specific churches and their uh, heart posture. And so one of the churches that uh, is being written about is the church in uh, Thyatira, right? And in some versions like the New King James, it talks about the corrupt church. And I'm going to read this briefly to you. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children, with death and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the minds and hearts and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now, this is, of course, addressing this church. Now, I'm not going to get into eschatology and it may be referring to later churches and this timeline. I'm not going to get into that. But regardless, the takeaway here is that the character of God, right, the character of God is consistent throughout time, right? He doesn't just uh, uh, hate sin and he's uh, holy and then one day he's like, oh, you know what? I'm okay with what you're doing. I'm okay with this sin and this debauchery and what you're doing. 
So the way he views society with humanity, with sin and these things, it's always been consistent and the same. The difference is, is that sometimes he will give you a longer period to repent. Other times, his wrath, his judgment will come quickly. And so in Acts chapter 5, right? And so I'm just going to give you guys a couple of examples so that you know that I'm not just making this up. Because in the Bible, God always allowed a chance, yes, to repent, but he had to deal strictly, depending on the season, the whatever the message was at the time with the church or whatever authority needed to be exerted, God, he acted promptly when he so desired. And you have to realize that God, he's a just God. So even if he wanted to, even if he wanted to kill everybody on this earth right now, he would be justified because we all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short and we are, we are uh, utterly depraved in our sin. And so you have to realize that God's grace and mercy, yes, they are abound and they extend to us. But if he wanted to, he could kill all of us, send us to hell, and it would be, that's what it is. Now, again, people are going to talk about doctrine and stuff like that. I'm making a point about the, the depravity and the gap of who God is in his holiness and who we are in our uh, sin, in our, in our depravity of being like him. And uh, you have to realize that whenever God wants to and if he needs to make a point, he will allow this to happen. Now, I'm not going to talk about later, later on, like uh, the full horsemen and how, uh, you know, God will give. And let me let me say this. God, he, he sends angels of death, right, throughout Scripture. You got the Israelites with the uh, painting on the doorpost, right, the angel, the Passover. You have even later, uh, in between, there's a lot of stories. But even uh, uh, here, right, in um, Revelations chapter 6, it's talking about, the pale horse who will who's going to come and they will have the authority to take a fourth of the earth to kill with sword with hunger with death and by the beasts of the earth and so god himself sends death and wrath and punishment now god also allows right don't get this confused with satan right god also permits by his uh, sovereignty his authority giving permission to satan to test and to have destruction, you saw that as an example in Job chapter 1 and 2, right? It says in Job chapter 1, right, in verse 8, uh, uh, Lord uh, saying to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God, one who fears God and shuns evil? So there's a common theme here, guys. There's this idea that you have to fear God, and even if with Satan, right? So don't get this message confused. Even with Satan, even though he was a, according to God, and a blameless and upright man who fears God, God still allowed death to come around him with his sons and daughters and things like that. So I'm not saying that I know exactly your situation or anybody else's situation on what, uh, why it's happening, but I want to tell you that this, uh, and I'm going to get into details, this is going to happen in this uh, season right now and also to the very end. And so people are not realizing because they have an impartial view of God, of who God is. They don't realize that God also, he has to deal with sin. And according to his own, I don't know, will and desire, however he wants to allow things to play out, he will have to send uh, angels of death. He, ha he also ha has to send people to direct others to repent or else they face consequences. So I'm, a I'm about to say something very bold. God is going to give the authority to be a vessel for the execution of God's wrath and punishment on certain people if they don't repent and turn from their ways. And just like in Acts chapter 5, and I'm going to give you guys some stories and verses, right? A lot of people, a lot of churches and pastors, they're not going to preach about this. They're not going to tell you that, oh, uh, people will have certain abilities and things like that. This, this happens behind closed doors that not a lot of people want to hear or talk about because, again, people have an impartial, uh, 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 unbalanced view of who God is. In Acts chapter 5, there's this story of Ananias and Sapphira who, with Simon Peter, he declared uh, death over these, these guys and they dropped dead. So verse 1 says, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession and he kept back part of the proceeds. His wife also, being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? 
You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear, again, great fear came upon those who heard these things. And the young man arose and wrapped him and carried him out and buried him. Now it was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have, have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried, buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. So I'm here to declare something, guys. The fear of God in many churches is absent. The fear of God is not there in its totality. And what God has to do to correct that is he has to allow certain things to instill and make sure that you understand the fear of God. I'm not here to say, oh, he's not Abba Father or he's some distant God. I'm not, I'm not trying to skew your understanding of, of who God is. Yes, he's an intimate, loving, close Abba Father. But you have to realize that you can't just abuse grace. You can't just think that you can sin and do whatever and just like with Ananias, get away with it. Like you, you can lie in front of men, but God sees it. God sees all of it. And there are many ministers, men and women of God or quote unquote saved people that are abusing and lying, right? Doing things against the Lord and against the Holy Spirit. And God, again, as I've said before, he can extend grace for a certain period, but other times he will have to deal with it and he will deal with it very swiftly. And so the restoration of making sure that the fear of God is coming upon the church has to be done in such a way where, just like with uh, Ananias and uh, Sapphira, with Simon Peter, and even Paul, right? In Acts chapter 13, he strikes blind this guy named Bar-Jesus. The fact of the matter is, the wrath of God, the, the punishment of God, the justice of God has to be executed. And oftentimes, and this is where it's going to get specific, many of you, and many others in the world, I'm just declaring in, in just in the body of Christ, they, there are going to be roles in the church, just like Paul and Simon Peter and many others who have declared, right, declared the judgment of God. You, these people may first have to make sure that you are clearly distinguishing what is sin and not sin and giving them time to repent. But if not, you may be in a role, you may be in a role for which you must declare judgment, punishment, uh, and the wrath of God over somebody. And that may include death. And I, I'm saying, I'm saying, I'm not here to say that I'm hoping for, I'm not here to say that let's, let's all pray and rub our hands and think, oh yeah, let's, I'm going to try to, I want to declare, I want this ability to declare death. That's not the point. That's not the point. And you shouldn't be praying for that. I'm saying that for many of you, because you will have an anointing, you will have an authority and many, and maybe many that are not watching, right? They're going to be given assignments to go tell people you must repent and turn from your ways. Otherwise, just like with Simon Peter, he has to declare uh, righteousness and judgment over these people so that the fear of God is restored to the church. Now, I know a lot of people are going to twist this and say, oh man, look at this guy, Chris. He's such a morbid, uh, bad person. No, I'm just declaring to you what is already biblical, what is already the character of God, but it's being lost or it's not being fully communicated. A lot of people, they they love the, the fuzzy-wuzzy, loving part of God. And yes, that's true. That's absolutely the blessings and all that stuff. That's true. But you have to not forget who God is and how holy he is, how detested he is from sin and how separated he, ha uh, he is from that stance. And so in order for the church to function and for restoration to occur and for judgment and for uh, punishment and for righteousness to be, to be done and for discipline to be done, Forgot about this, but God disciplines those he loves, right? God disciplines those he loves. And even with uh, Ananias and Sapphira, presumably they were believers. Because if you look in the previous chapter and stuff, talking to all the believers, and because God, he declares judgment, right? He, uh, he disciplines those he loves. It, it couldn't be assumed that these believers, uh, their, their last breath was that day because of what they did. And so I'm not here to make uh, claims of how I know, like if, if you're going through some suffering and you're about to die from, I don't know, some cancer or something like that. I'm not saying that that's the wrath of God. That could be, on the other hand, like with Job's situation, right? Maybe a testing. I don't know. I'm not here to declare those things. But what I do want to say is that up till this time, people may not have known 
but there may secretly have been people in prayer for which they had to, in the quiet place, approach somebody and say, hey, this is what the Lord told me to tell you. You must repent of your ways. If you don't, then this cancer will come upon you. And it was all hush-hush. You may not know that this existed, but this is probably an execution of the judgment of God. And and it's not front-page news. It's not going to be on your bulletin in the church announcement uh, board, right? And so what I'm saying is that you have to understand biblically how God disciplines and executes uh, his judgment. And you and this has to be restored in order for us to move to the end times and especially as a revelation and all, all the stuff with the angel of death and the tribulation, these things have to happen. People have to have a correct view of who God is. And so this is going to come and I'm declaring it to you right now. And I'm not saying you should wish for this. I'm not saying that this is something that, uh, you know, you just, and you're going to get scared about and you, you don't know how to live your life. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that this restoration of it and, and the evidence of this biblically is there. I'm just declaring to you that in this season, this will be shown because God has to uh, deal with his church and discipline his children because a lot of people, they've fallen away. A lot of people, they've abused the grace of God. A lot of people, they think they can get away with certain things, not knowing the complete character of who God is. This skewing, this imbalance, it has to be rebalanced. It has to be set, course corrected, back to what, uh, as an example, with the, the book of Acts church, right? And the way he wants the body of Christ to function in this period. So I want to give this word to you guys. Be very careful if the Lord is leading you. Uh, this is not some easy thing, right? You're, you're not you're not going to go and just start declaring death over somebody. Oh, I hate that guy. Oh, no, 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 that's not how. In fact, if you're not in the right place at all with your heart between you and God, then God is definitely not going to give you any sort of spiritual authority for this kind of stuff. Let alone people want uh, the gift of healing, the the gift of uh, deliverance, right? But God doesn't allow that because your heart may not be in the right place. So this is not this is reserved for a very select, anointed few for which. Prophetically speaking, uh, apostles, right? These guys, they have to exercise uh, who got the the authority of God, and this is done through them in their uh, right standing with Him. But as an example, just like with Paul and Simon Peter, just like with these guys, this is what's happening right now. So be very careful, be aware of this, pray about it. Is this really true? What Chris is saying that uh, people are going to now start declaring death over. Uh, uh, others and brothers and sisters for whatever sins they committed. I'm not saying I know how God is going to work, but just be aware that this concept is biblical and it has to be brought back because people need to understand the fear of God. So I just want to encourage you guys with this. Pray about it. It's a tough word for me even. Uh, and I pray that I delivered uh, what I could. This, this is everything that has come to my memory um, as a spirit was leading, but uh, pray through it. So love you guys. Talk to you guys very soon.